Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of What Do You Call It? Podcast. I'm your host GB. Today's guest, well, she says she is the last true Cockney and the East End brawler. Please give it up for Bo Bells. How are you doing today? You're good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. No I'm really excited. I love talking, so this is like prime time for me. <laughs> love it, love it. Uh, Essex and Cockney sort of worlds collide. I, I know, know, right? It was like East the East. East. Each other. <laughs> it's like what's gonna happen? Too much East for one podcast. Nah, no, it's fine. It's good. The viewers should like, be nervous. Um, it's gonna be so confused by this. Episode. East and Essex are always kind of kindred. So yeah, I feel like yeah, what the practically best mates already. So exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to go straight into the Cockney stuff because I don't think I've Ooh. actually had a conversation about it. I mentioned it to you before. It's like, look, I actually want to talk about it. I think it'll be quite fun. Um, yeah, a yeah. lot of my listeners aren't UK based. Even if they Ooh. are UK based, they might be outside our areas and not really have a clue or sort of, you know, what we're on about. So yeah. I'm aware of Cockney, but I think yeah. it'd be cool and interesting if you could explain to the listeners what exactly is a Cockney and if you can give any examples to the language. Yeah, sure. So for me, like I grew up in East London, some mm. are, Cockney traditionally is someone from East London. Um, the reason I'm called Bow Bells actually, um, there was, I think it's back in the 1700s, obviously the London landscape looks a lot different then. Um, but if you were born within the ring of the Bow Bells church, you were a true Cockney, you were a true East Londoner, you were East London through and through. So that's actually where I got my name from. Um, awesome. It made wow. sense for me. I was living, <laughs> I'm living in Bow at the time. Yeah. I was like, you know, these are my people. This is where I'm from. That's what I want to represent. I think like there's a lot of kind of media representation for Cockneys now than there was years ago. I think years mm. ago it was like Dick Van Dyke, you know, shine your shoes, mm. governor. That was like, like that kind Daddy of Doyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but then, like, now, obviously, you've got, like, Danny Dyer, you've got um, Guy Ritchie's films, like, Snatch mm. and uh, Lock, Stock and stuff that kind of represented that kind of side of East London. Um, so, yeah, I grew up around a lot of Cockneys. I grew up in East London in the 90s, and it was, you know, a lot of fellas mm. <laughs> being very East London. It's really hard to kind of define East London. There's little bits of it that I try and pull out to, like, show people. I think being, you know, quite... Um, Cocky can be, people would say cocky can be a word. A um, little bit, you know, cheeky, a little bit of mm. cheek. I always describe myself as a cheeky scamp. I think a lot of cockneys are cheeky, you know, kind of, but also very friendly. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, there's a lot of kind mm. of, people think Londoners are like, you know, oh, they don't talk and they don't make eye contact on the tube, huh? whatever, which is true, don't make eye contact A lot of them, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but the yeah I think like East London itself is a really like people from it are really friendly in my mm -hmm. experience um, so I think I try you know that kind of like bravado that Cockneys have like I try and kind of put that into like wrestling you know there's already quite a, a few people that are representing East London you know I'm trying to like I might I might message Shah Samuels and be like uh, can I, can I be your little East apprentice, please? <laughs> Love Shah so, Yeah, he's amazing. And I think, you know, his, like, his, you know, like, real big, like, character, lots of charisma, you know, really friendly, but really, like, can, like, go over to, like, yeah. you know, cocky and obnoxious. I think that's where it kind of, like... like you can either be a hill really or a face, like, depending on what town you're in. Absolutely. Um, I wrestled in uh, North, in the North, the north obviously being from london everywhere's the north outside yeah. of the m25 um but yeah so i wrestled in huddersfield yeah. um and i was here on the show and i just went out and i was like this is how we do it in london and they were like just like yeah <laughs> it was really fun it was really really fun but um but yeah it's i think um you know cockneys are good people i think they mm. can be misrepresented we're not all you know, like bugs and of, hooligans, like Dr. Martin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think there's um, yeah, there's obviously like you know the kind of football hooligan yeah. that comes in from like West, West, West Ham and stuff like that. Yeah, my uh, I've got a lot of friends who are West Ham fans, and my partner's West Ham fans. So kind Sorry of to hear that. Pull little bits that. out of it, but not quite <laughs> the horrible side of it. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a fun like. I love East London. Like, it's the reason why I put so much of it into my character. Mm. Like, it's where I'm from. It's who I am. So, and I think you get a lot of that in East. Like, you get it in all of London. But, like, I think for me, East specifically, mm. but yeah, it's you a real, like, kind of passion. Into, yeah. Yeah. No, I like yeah. that. And the fact that I've got, like, sort of an origin story from it as well. Um, yeah. Just before I do sort of wrap the Cockney talk up, and I actually want to know if you could do any Cockney rhyming. 
Oh my god! So growing up, my dad did a lot of it. it was apples and pears, his stairs. Yep. Dog and bone, his phone. Ruby, um, Murray, curry. Yeah, exactly. They're the, they're the, they're always the three that stick out to me. I think Danny apples and pears. It's always like the thing is that I bought. Someone bought me a book of Cockney Rhyme and Slam years ago, and I've lost it. Uh, I'm really annoyed because I really want to use it for promos because I feel like I could do a whole promo just like with Cockney Rhyme and Slam. I think that'd People be awesome, would be like, yeah. "What is she saying?" <laughs> especially if you say like a lot of your um mm. listeners and watchers aren't you know kind of uk based i think yeah they are probably thinking like, like talking a completely different la- like like yeah, new language right now not even a different language but a new language right now like, yeah i think because it's like rhyming you can try and figure it out so like yeah. I said, dog and bone that was a massive one when i was growing up and it's like the phone so it's you know it's but then you know if you've got overseas they might call different things different things anyway you know like yeah. america calls like garbage and, and like rubbish they'll be yeah. like the slang they might not even try and like connect because they'll be like that's not a word what are mm. they talking about like, when, like, but, like in the south they call like well not south they call it the north as well but like they have a cigarette a fag like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh snout i think that was where i was growing up it was a snout like yeah it was like, it was like no it's no not, not being homophobic <laughs> yeah I think for me as well, like growing up, I grew up in a really kind of multicultural area as well. Yeah. So I had a lot of like um kind of like Jamaican Caribbean influence, like rude boy grime kind of mm. vibes coming in there as well. So I always like to like have a little bit of that in my character too. Cause I think, you know, that's really important to me. And that's how I grew up. And, you know, a lot of my friends, like some, you know, I grew up in like an area with a lot of kind of different influence. Mm-hmm. So I like to have my character and me be like, you know, try and represent all of that and everything that's kind of gone into Bow Bells is like got that in as well. So it's like I like to come out um like my entrance music's Bowie Free by Wiley, um, which, you know, kind of paying a little nod to the East London like grime scene as well. Cause obviously like, you know, it started yeah, in I East love, London. Let's talk about grime again. I love it. I, I was talking to yeah. JPR about this. I was like, well this is like talking about grime for like 10 minutes. But no, no, just that's it really makes me smile. I love grime. Yeah, yeah, me too. Like and that was, you know, when I was growing up in the 90s, mm-hmm. like pirate radio stations were like you know, me and my sister would be like mm. an ear each, like listening to pirate radio stations. And it was a lot of like jungle and then garage and then yeah. grew into like grime and stuff. So I love that element as well. And I think, you know, that's another kind of bit that I try and pull in from like East London history as well to like kind of pay homage to it. Mm. That's wicked. No, that's good. I love the background as well. If anyone's unsure, you can kind of see it now in people just do nothing. Uh, on BBC yeah. iPlayer or I think it might be <laughs> Netflix as well. So if you kind of want to sort of know how it was like back then, you can kind of get a take just by watching that show. Just yeah, you know, just, uh, there's actually for that anyone that's in London, there's um oh, I, I'm going to go to it as well. But the the Museum of London, there is a um a, a, a exhibition about crime, and it's really no in London. Yeah, yeah. So I think um that's it popped up on my Instagram because obviously like. Yeah, it's yeah. like hashtag my stuff of like east london all the time so it came mm-hmm. up and i was like oh my god i need to go to that try and get more stuff that i can like incorporate into the character and stuff you know the older generation are just gonna hate that but i fucking love it I, <laughs> oh my am squeezing my lunch i did i genuinely didn't know sorry like, that's, yeah if yeah, i had things cool. i can have from like what's gonna you know what i know about this year that would not be something i predict a grime yeah. exhibition in the museum that's fucking yeah seriously i saw it come up and i was like that's amazing like mm. like i said from seeing that come up when i was a kid and stuff and like it yeah. being important to me kind of growing up you know yeah, yeah, i think yeah. like everyone just assumes because of the way i look i've got tattoos and i've got you mm. know colored hair and stretched ears that i'm just alternative and i just listen to alternative music mm-hmm. but like i love like yeah grime and like um you know where it's kind of evolved from as well like to like what it's like now like it's yeah. really interesting so yeah, oh, i couldn't tell you in the charts now i couldn't tell you like big and grime but i'll still go back oh no to, like, old I'm, st- I'm still listening to like dizzy rascal boy in the corner like <laughs> oh, <laughs> i'm literally living in the year 2000 oh, <laughs> so i won't do the whole track listen but no that's that is that is awesome I, what i want to talk about now is how i know you wrestling I want yeah. to find out what actually got you into wrestling in the first place. So I've got these Marshall songs in my head now. So I need to change the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've always, and I'm like, oh, should I come out to um, oh, Fix Up Look Shark? Because I feel like that's such good entrance music as well. Yeah. So I'm going to have to figure out if anyone comes out to that. Um, but yeah, wrestling wise, I grew up watching wrestling. I'm kind of a lifelong fan. Mm-hmm. Um, my nan was a massive wrestling fan. She loved World of Sport and stuff. So I always remember it kind of being on when I was at her house and it kind of just went in like when I was little yeah um and then I started watching WWE when I was a kid um probably about seven or eight um watched it through until kind of my mid-20s um 
kind of fell off a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. I'd say in the mid 2000s, late 2000s, um, just because I started going out to clubs and getting drunk. <laughs> so I was like, not enough time for wrestling. I've got to go oh, social. <laughs> <laughs> but I also used to always watch WrestleMania. It didn't matter like yeah. how long I hadn't watched wrestling for. I'd always check in for WrestleMania, um, sometimes the Royal Rumble, because obviously in WWE they're the biggest two of the biggest shows in the yeah, year yeah, like the so I keep like right, yeah. you know I keep a tabs on it and like when I was in like kind of my late teens as well I started like going to like indie wrestling shows I remember going to an FWA show in 2004 oh, it's yeah in, bad, um, in like Holchester Johnny Storm and, and Johnny Flyers and yeah. yeah yeah absolutely and I remember AJ Styles was there and yeah. I just forgot about that 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 had even happened in my life until he came back into WWE and then I was like Oh yeah, AJ Styles. I haven't seen him for ages. I saw him in 2004. Like that was so <laughs> weird. Um, but yeah, kind of like for a few years didn't watch it kind of like, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. And then about I'd say 2013-14, uh, one of my partner's friends was like, Do you want to watch wrestling? And I was like, I love wrestling. Yeah, of course I do. And then that was it. I like got hooked and like straight back into it. I think like coming back to WWE um and starting watching that, the shield had just like started coming in yeah. so that was me I was I'm a massive like oh. Seth Rollins fan but yeah I started watching that and I was like oh okay wrestling is good so started watching that and then obviously started discovering like British wrestling in that mm -hmm. time period as well and was just like did not realize how much of it was on my doorstep you know I was living in like East London at this time and did not realize like you know down the road from where I work Lucha Britannia was in an archway in Bethnal Green so uh, yeah, arms, started, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so started um started getting back into wrestling through that. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, and then it kind of went from there. I uh, started training in 2018 um because uh Pro Wrestling Eve opened up Eve Academy, which mm -hmm. was their women's only school. I think it was for me, I was like, I wanted to wrestle when I was 18. I looked up some wrestling schools and I think one was in Blackpool at the time. And obviously, bear in mind, I was like 18, grew up in London. I said to my mum, I was like, oh, I want to go to Blackpool and learn to wrestle. And she was like, absolutely not. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. She was like, I'm not sending my child, my tiny child off to go and like throw herself around. Um, but obviously she couldn't stop me as an adult. So, you know, once um, when uh, Eve Academy opened in 2018, mm -hmm. uh, walked through the doors of the Res Gal, had my first session and was just like, you were hooked. Oh, okay. I love it even more now. Like, yeah, it was like, it was, a, you know, people say like it's addictive, like straight away. And it was, I was just like hooked mm. from the very first session. I was like, yeah, this is, this is where I'm going to be. <laughs> in the first session that you did have, what actually mm. happened in the first session? Were you doing bumps? Were you just sort of introduced, like being introduced? Didn't do bumps to... straight away. Oh, really? Didn't do bumps. No, no, no. They, um, so they eased us in, bless mm -hmm. them. Uh, so we did rolls. That's the first thing you learn. Um, yeah. I think a lot of wrestling school um is forward rolls yeah. uh shoulder rolls and back rolls um i remember going in uh so it was greg burridge and rio o'reilly um and they kind mm. of you know talked us through this is i remember walking in and the ring was just there and i was like oh my god like ah there's a wrestling ring right there and i'm gonna get in it so um yeah you first learn like rolls and that's you know you drill those to make sure because a lot of moves when you actually look at some moves you're rolling out of them and it's protecting yourself you know so yeah first rolls and then yeah so uh it's it's also about body control body movement mm -hmm. doing things in the ring because you do we do a drill where you kind of roll around the ring with other people so you're mm -hmm. kind of aware of them and where you're going all the lovely things that go into wrestling um and then i think it was a couple of weeks and we did bumps and that was one of the scariest things to do <laughs> um i think when you first start and you're like let me just throw myself, you know, for no reason. Yeah. I think it's it's sometimes easier when you're doing a move or when someone like, you know, yeets you down. You've got no real choice. But when you kind of go, you're like, yeah, because you're Whoa. not looking, no, it's literally, yeah. No, it was, yeah, I think like, the, the, I don't know, for, for me, I just, the more I went and the more I learned about it and the more I kind of used my body to do this thing that will mm -hmm. lead to a performance, that was what hooked me. Um, we also had to do promos like pretty much straight away they were like right end of the session get in the ring tell me why you're going to beat Rhea next week and I was mm. like I can imagine you being up for it yeah I can imagine yeah I was I like, like yeah. I think it's it is scary you know because you I think when we you know I'm trying to think some years ago but like you know there was probably like 20 30 people in the room mm -hmm. so to get up in a ring and hold a room and like you know be a character and say whatever yeah. it is you're going to say it can't just be like, like oh, it's no 
yeah, it's, it's proper nerve wracking. But like, like I said, I the one thing that drew always drew me to wrestling was the performance. You know, these massive characters telling a story and making people feel things, and that's what I love about wrestling. So when I get the opportunity to do it, I'm like, yeah, let's go. So I was like, you know. Oh yeah, she's ready. She's here. Um, I think sometimes it's harder. You know, you all have harder days more than others. But I think that was a really good kind of like start into the wrestling world mm-hmm. of getting us to do that because the performance element is such a massive thing for it. You know, you have to be able to get up in front of a crowd and hold a room and tell a story. So yeah, I think that was really that was a massive learning curve for me. But it was kind of like utilizing stuff I already had in me you know I knew that I could perform and I know that I've got character and I know I can be you know hold a room it's just getting in a ring and then adding a physical element onto that yeah. and still being able to do it so just yeah. all combined I was, like two. I said it was love at first sight <laughs> no I love it I can hear the passion already um I will talk about your coach as well that you I know you wrestled her early in the year in February uh Rio O'Reilly mm-hmm. but I want to talk about your debut the official wrestling debut that you had the first ever match I want to hear about that because I actually get quite funny stories from it. Um, did you have any friends or family there, by the way? Or was it in the pandemic by any chance? Just because it's becoming um, more more. So do you <laughs> mean, so I wrestled in February against Rhea at Pro Wrestling yeah. East. Um, I'd say that was my that was my singles debut. Singles debut, um, oh, okay. Yeah, do you want me to talk about that? Or we did Just a... what was the first time you was in the ring in front of a crowd? Would it have been so maybe the like very a Royal Rumble? First time, battle royal? Yeah, so I, I, <laughs> the first two times I was in the ring, the first time was six weeks after we start, started training. Yeah. Um, uh, the um, L- London School of Lucha Libre, which is run by Greg Burridge and Gary Vanhorn, um, they had uh, Triple L, the London Lucha League, which was one of their shows. They it was, it was essentially a, a school show, like training, like people that were coming up that could go on it. So six weeks after we started training, Greg was like, right, who wants to be in a rumble? And I was like, I think so. <laughs> I, don't know what, I mean maybe right, we're um, yeah. <laughs> yeah so there was quite a few of us actually there was I think there was probably about 15 people from the the class at Eve Academy that wanted to go and do the rumble so they had like a, um, a women's rumble and I remember I was training with uh someone else at the time and they we were like we'll stick together and we'll do this little little bit you know we'd only learned like you know a headlock and a wrist lock at the time <laughs> so we were like we're just like we'll just we'll just pair together and we'll do this just stay at the we'll end do- right I don't yeah. care what they say <laughs> yeah literally it was just like whatever it'll be fine um and I remember like going down I remember when the music hit for us got to go down like it was mm-hmm. let's get ready to rumble um and well, you came I remember to going down deck. well sorry oh, what's that yeah. uh, Duncan and oh, I forgot their names now PJ and Duncan that's the one sorry that's yes um so we like came down the stairs and literally as the music hit and I came down the stairs I yeah. was like adrenaline straight away I was like yeah I love this I love yeah. this so like got in the ring I think at the beginning as well there was um because it was like a women's rumble uh Tarquin who's a UK wrestler he's very like a bit of a toff, bit of a Tory, um, came in and was like, had a picture of Margaret Thatcher. Oh, um, yeah, and, I've seen that, I've seen that. <laughs> and um, I think it was, it was either Darcy Stone or mm-hmm. Sadie Gibbs who were in it as well. And they like hit him with the picture of Margaret Thatcher. Because we were like, obviously, ma- fuck that. Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, um, yeah, and then good. it started. And then I said, me and uh, the person that I was training with, mm-hmm. they were like, we were like, right, let's do our, you know, literally 60 second sequence of like, let's wrestle each other like oh I'll get you in a headlock and then she like so they pulled me out like yeah. I eliminated them and then they pulled me out and then we like fought up the stairs and that was it it was probably two minutes if that not even probably like 90 seconds 60 seconds of actual like being in the ring but I was hooked I was like mm. yes I want that I want the lights I want the camera I want the action and I <laughs> like, want that theme was... song forever <laughs> yeah literally we reach out to the um, ratings <laughs> Yeah, it was it was just like I was like, yeah. And I think mm. I think the reason they did it, because they were like, let's see if people actually, you know, kind of want to do this, you know, not to like, you know, eat people out. But I think yeah, not scare away, but just just to Yeah, just to see if you want to do it or not. Because I think with Eve Academy, there was a real opportunity for people to do it as a, you know, a, a place to work out, you know, mm-hmm. and in and like a, a fun way to get strong and as a woman or you know, to take up space, because you know, women are kind of told to be quiet and you know seen and not heard kind of thing so yeah. Eve Academy was very much like come and be loud and be vocal and be silly and be strong as well which was really nice so um I mean, so, yeah, it was, great it was, reputation itself I mean like it's still, yeah, it's still yeah. as well. 
yeah they're like, like you know they've done so much for women's wrestling mm. it's amazing um but yeah that was that was the first little taste that i got and i was like right i, I want to do it so did you have I was, any friends or family there the, uh, not for that one no uh, we then uh we did another rumble the eve uh i can't remember what it was called it had a really long stupid name you know like the, something in, invitational something yeah. uh memorial rumble or something like that um and there was nine of us from eve academy that were doing it so we got to actually you know showcase a little bit more of everyone yeah. that was doing it because the other one the first one that we did there was about 30 people in it um so this one my sister was there and my niece and nephew, which was really cool. So my nice. nephew, I think, was like six at the time. So I I I like I was one of the first people out. So I actually got to have an entrance, which was really nice. Um, and then had like a little sequence with uh Rebel Kinney, um, who's retired now. But yeah, we got to have a nice little sequence at the beginning. Um, so my nephew was just like, he said after, he was like, oh, you're so strong, aren't you, Sally? And I was like, yes, Aww. that's what I want, you know. Um, hey, babe, I love that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'm like, <laughs> but yeah, no, I love that. I, you know, it's it's what I, you know, when I was a kid watching wrestling and I watched Lita, mm. you know, jumping off and being really strong and capable and like, you know, watching the women's matches yeah. that happened. That and really inspired. Like, yeah, and that's what, you know, I love that, that my little... You know, my little family were like, yeah, I'm proud of you. My mom would not watch me at all. Really? My mom's like, yeah, she's like, absolutely not. She was like, you're my baby. I don't want to see Aww. you get like, you yeah. know. Uh, not <laughs> like in a negative way, like, like, I hate wrestling, but just actually concerned. Oh, that's cute. You can't fault with Yeah, that. it is cute. I'm like, the thing is, like, I kind of want her to watch because I'm like, look what I can do. Yeah. Like, some of the stuff that I can do now compared to what I can do then. Like, I'm really impressed. I'm even impressed with myself sometimes when I watch it back. I'm like, how do I do that? So I want to be like, Mum, be proud of me. <laughs> but also, like, yeah, I am her baby girl, so she doesn't want me to like see me getting hurt. So I'll allow it. <laughs> it's literally like surprise for like one minute. Oh yeah, front row. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, my so my sister was there, and my niece and nephew, and my partner was there. Mm -hmm. um, one of my oldest friends from school was there. She saw because we'd watch wrestling together when we were like in secondary school. Oh, so she cool. came to watch me as well, and she yeah. was like, amazing. And I was like, yeah so it's always nice to have like family and friends come along yeah. and be like wow because it's not really it's not really a thing you can like bust out in the local pub and be like look yeah, like spoons, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no that's awesome that's awesome speaking of friends uh a bestie of yours in wrestling i think you know i'm gonna mention uh, i had them as, on the guests uh, as a show fantastic guests i really enjoy speaking to them sky of shore yeah. i want to know i got to know how did you meet them First yeah. impression of them as well. Oh. oh, cute. Um, yeah. Feel so free to bitch about them, by the way, if you want. I'm no, absolutely not. I'm never. I'm absolutely like no. even angry at the thought of someone like even being mean to Sky. Oh. I'm like, I would end your life. Guys, cool. Um, I love Sky. Yeah, we um so we met at uh, we did meet at um uh London School of Lucha Libra and mm. Eve, like so Eve shows, like um I crewed Eve shows for a number of years. Um it was a really nice way to like find out about wrestling you know kind of be backstage and like you know meet lots of incredible uh female wrestlers I got to meet some of my like idols and stuff through that which is amazing yeah um so Sky uh also was uh you'll notice from their Twitter handle WrestleTech Kid that's not a reference to their technical wrestling it's actually a reference to the fact that they used to tech for a lot of shows yeah. <laughs> and they said to me the other day they were like I'm gonna have to change that like soon because people are gonna think I'm a technical wrestler and I'm like I think you should keep it I think I think they should keep it like for the irony now I think it's yeah. funny <laughs> and they'll just bust out some tech every now and again just to like keep up the keep up the name um but yeah we met through that um i didn't i didn't go to the london school of lucha libra as much so i went to eve academy mm -hmm. just because as a anxious person i went to a, the group of girls which you know there was never any kind of like attitude from anyone but london school of lucha libra it was all me i was like <laughs> oh, that's a proper school, I'm scared, I can't go, you know, it was like that it, I was intimidated myself, yeah. um, but when I did go, like, Sky would be there, and we'd always, like, train together, um, and then, like I say, through going to the Triple uh, L shows, and also um, just kind of being around Resistance Gallery when it was around, 
um, you know, we kind of talked a bit. I think we became really close when uh, we started training at Play Fight, which is uh, the current mm. training school I train with, which is owned by uh, Cara Noir, Tom Dawkins. Yeah. Um, and they've got One some the amazing trainers there. In, in wrestling, by the way. Yeah. You know, if you want to learn performance, <laughs> like there it is, you know. Yeah. Uh, but also, you know, you've got Spike Trevay is training there as well, who's an incredible really? performer. I don't yeah, know Spike. Yeah, that's Spike's such a dick but i love i love his work <laughs> so he's good. like yeah one of the best heels in the country yeah. because everyone loves to hate him and that's yes. what but you know, that, that, doing do. your job right doing your job yeah 100 right. um so yeah so we started training together at play fight um, they have a class which is specifically for uh, women, non-binary and trans folks. Um, mm. So it's called Shake the Table. Um, so that's a nice little kind of like, we're here to shake the table, shake it up, you know. Yeah, yeah. Wrestling cool. is kind of, you know, cis male orientated. It's dominated even, not orientated, sorry. Um, so we're, we're here to shake it up. So me and Sky have been training together at Play Fight for about a year and a half now since it opened last year after the pandemic. Obviously, pandemic ruined, <laughs> ruined yeah. everything. Um, but yeah, so we started training there and we just, I don't know, just something clicked with us. Like, you know, we're both, funnily enough, we're both anxious messes. We just present it in very different ways. So Sky is very like, Bleh. I'm very, Bleh, yeah, which is why I, I, see, I see it in the time. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, we started training together a lot. Um, and then, yeah, the kind of the rest is history, as they say. I'm so we become, yeah, the besties came together. Um, it was kind of that natural Kind of friendship that you have yeah. you know and you just like connect with someone and then you're like oh we got on so well we've got so much in common um but yeah it's it's great to have no, someone so no hill like turns that. coming at the moment no. <laughs> oh uh, one match gotta leave at least a couple no i'm joking nah. <laughs> um but yeah no 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 nah. like it's this um you know it's fun wrestling with sky we had yeah. our first match as a tag uh fight and flight because we were having a conversation about mental health um yeah. and you know th there is the the fight or flight response and we were talking about how our, how our anxiety prevents uh, presents sorry because i'm i'm quite anxious as a person as well but no one ever guesses it because i'm like Bleh, you know they don't think that people who talk <laughs> as much as me are going to be anxious yeah. so when we were talking about it we were like oh so they're the flight response they're the one that wants to run away and hide and i'm the flight response because i'm the one that's like i will stand here and i'll do it so that's where fight and flight came from uh but we had our first match um at pro wrestling east um a couple of weeks ago and we won so the power of friendship came awesome. through really like um, pro wrestling east's presentation by the way and how they promote uh, events really good yeah they're they're an amazing mm. promotion like they're good stuff for what so far. yeah like they're really really good people backstage mm. you know they look after their you know the crew and the wrestlers um really lovely locker room you know it's been it's been a really like real pleasure um wrestling for them um and they like fight and flight so we're like hopefully we'll be back again can't do any wrong moment then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, speaking of your first singles match uh, i know we touched on it earlier uh real yep. riley uh, one yes. of the first female wrestlers that I kind of clocked on in, term, in terms of the British wrestling when I sort yes. of discovered an independent wrestling and not just WWE. I want to yes. know, how was that for you, someone that was, you know, not necessarily trained directly just by her, but had trained by her guidance yeah. and to be in the ring with her for your first yeah. singles match? I just know, I I know. know experience and how was it? It was incredible. Like, Rhea is one of the most amazing humans I've ever met. Like, she's changed my life for the better. Yeah. Um, I know like when I started getting back into wrestling and started watching independent wrestling and found Pro Wrestling Eve, she was in it and I was like, oh, yeah. she's amazing. And I remember going to the first couple of times I went to training, I was like, I want to be her friend. How do I make her my friend? <laughs> um, luckily I did. I just, I just wore her down. But um, uh, so the first match was amazing. Like I was yeah. so worried about it because obviously anyone, you know, that debuts, you want to do a good job. You want to... Yeah you know, not shit the bed <laughs> and, you know, you want to kind of present yourself. Mm. And I also felt, you know, there's another kind of layers to it because I am a female wrestler and I think there's a lot of pressure on women's wrestling to be, you know, at a certain level or you're yeah. just like, oh, it's a woman. B, I was one of Rhea's trainees, you know, I'm kind of one of the first people out of Eve Academy that's getting like booked on shows and stuff. So I wanted to represent that. Mm -hmm. Also representing Play Fight because I've been training with them for a while and also didn't want to let my friend down because I love Rhea. So there was a lot going into it. Um, it was amazing. The match itself, like I watched it back actually recently and I could tell how nervous I was, but I still got through it. And that is largely in part to Rhea. She is like 
the ultimate professional in wrestling. She is yeah. amazing to work with. She she's so intuitive with how wrestling works. So when we were planning the match and, you know, she'd give me opportunities. There's always a learning moment with Rhea as well. She'd give me opportunities and she'd be like, oh, with this, I'll do this, but, you know, we'll do this. And I was like, ah. Um, and when we got there as well, we were supposed to be third on. And then we got bumped up to second. And then as the show opened, they were like, oh, the first match isn't here. So you're going on first. So I then had to go on first. I know. Uh, I literally, hell. like, yeah. lost my mind. I was like, but, but, third, second, first, go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> literally but because i didn't have enough time to worry so i kind yeah. of like just had to go out there and do it um but yeah it was it was amazing to wrestle rio she's such a like legend like mm -hmm. she doesn't get enough of her flowers in british wrestling because she's an icon yeah. um and she's an incredible wrestler she's an incredible character you know and uh she beat the crap out of me which was great which is what i wanted <laughs> but that's friendship um, i knew wrestling right <laughs> that is you know i'm actually look I'm actually wearing my Rhea O'Reilly t-shirt. If, if fans want to uh, purchase that, where can they get it from? Uh, on, I don't know. I'm going <laughs> to give you the link. Sorry, Rhea. Uh, go to uh, at Rhea O'Reilly on Twitter, and I'm sure she'll have a link to That's where you can right. buy her t-shirt. Oh, I, I actually know. think this one might be not in, in uh, what's it called? I don't think she's selling this one at the moment, but she's got an incredible one where she's dressed as Loki yeah. um, that my friend Dale Brody, who is a photographer, took. So it's like double whammy. Um, but yeah, I'm sure if you mm. if you go to at Rio Riley on Twitter or Instagram, yeah. she'll have a link. Sorry, awesome. Rhea. Awesome. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's, it's like Wayne's one, not long ago, and I'm just like, right, plug, plug, plug. You know, it's a scene. <laughs> of them, I think you might you've seen. You know, but if anyone hasn't seen it, it's a you know, yeah, yeah. Plug, it's brilliant. Um, speaking of cheap plugs, I actually want to give a shout out, by the way, to uh, Independent Wrestler Chocolate Thunder. Uh, what a massive okay. shout-out. He's currently raising money for charity uh, for his merchandise. Uh, great friend of the show. Uh, he's currently battling cancer. So if you can all support him, uh, check out his merch. You know, if you can, Choc. C H O C store dot big cartel dot com and support them any way you can. You know, much love. Put a squeeze in there. I'll take the fiver end of the show from you, mate. That's uh, not joking. Nah, he's he's awesome. He's awesome. <laughs> like, anyone... it's a bit across the table. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pal, pal. No, don't make it don't make it here. But no, I just had to squeeze that in there as well. But I'm, I want to do that. That was just you know, I yeah, used to do that. But um, is there anything you want to promote? Anything you want to? Tell the listeners the platform is yours. Anything you got lined up? Anything you want to say? Yeah. So um, we there is a wrestling um, festival going on on the twenty second to the twenty fourth at the Pleasant Theatre in London called Restival. Um, mm. So it's going to have uh, a few different amazing, incredible wrestling theatre shows. So I think a lot of wrestling, the, a lot of the wrestling community mm. might have seen Mythos, which is a Norse mythology combined with wrestling. Um, so they're going to have that show. We've got Mummy Versus, which is a story of, told about new mums through the medium of wrestling. Uh, there's NHS Smackdown, which is uh, <laughs> talking about um, the crisis that the NHS is in yeah. through wrestling. Um, and then there is uh, the head drop show, which is Rob Brazier's show. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the photographer, he has His head drop wrestling going for. Awesome, by the way. Really, yeah, he's he's been, incredible. I don't years, but yeah, him. I've been really, really lucky to work with Rob mm. a few times. He's an amazing, Brilliant. amazing human, amazing photographer. Yeah. Uh, so he's got a wrestling show. He had a couple of uh, resistance gallery before the pandemic, so he's got yeah. another one. Yeah. And I will be hosting that show, so you'll get to see more of me, hear more of this if you want um and then i think the last show on there is called fist club which is an amazing lycra clad queer explosion of cabaret and wrestling and i will be wrestling on that in another tag team because i love tag teams um and that should be announced this week uh i'm going to be wrestling in a tag with rita slayworth who is another uh, amazing trainee that's come out play fight um and through london school of lucha libra and through eve academy as well so we've been training together for quite a few years um and we have um a gimmick that is called gun rack uh because she has guns and i have a rack <laughs> <laughs> and that's genuinely all the thought we put into it 
we were like, yeah, what can we do? What are we as a tag team? Um, it's still we more fought have... than that than some of the rest of that's on TV at the moment. So I'll give you that. I mean, like some people just go, oh, there are two women chucking together. So we've got a little bit of thought. Um, we also, the Fist Club have had a few shows at mm-hmm. um, uh, Bethel Green Working Man's Club. And as part of that, we were kind of access warriors to make sure that people would come in if anyone had any access needs. So anyone that was disabled that was there or anyone just having any issues me and Rita Slayworth were there to kind of help people out. So we were the ultimate access warriors. So to make us stand out, we had the uh, ultimate warrior face paint. Love it. Um, and then naturally this tag has kind of come together for Fist Club. So we're going to be wrestling at Fist Club as well. Um, but yeah, if you, uh, it's called Restable. Um, so please have a look. There are, there's a ton of shows. I've probably missed something out. I'm actually going to find the, so if you go to pleasance.co.uk, um there will be um information about it oh everything patterned as well there you go everything patterned we're johnson so uh promoting women and people of color oh, nice. which is going to be incre- uh, going to be incredible as well um so yeah go go get tickets and go watch all the shows it's going to be amazing like awesome. three days of wrestling three days of like chaos it's going to be great hello there i've got a special announcement for my next yes Hello, my name is Rush Freeman. I am with the NWA. I am part of the Spectaculars. You can catch me on the What Do You Call It podcast right here. Yeah, heard. That's awesome. Sounds like you do have a lot coming up, which I'm looking forward to keeping up to date on social media. If the fans yeah. want to keep up to date with you, um, but is yeah. there anything else you want to sort of um, anything promote or you know speak on whilst we, you know, you've got yeah, the the guests, I think it was so. just um, we just sort of touched upon it a little bit, just yeah. um, with uh, everything patterns being on at uh, Restival, um, mm-hmm. just about diversity in wrestling. I just think it's um, you know, as a woman, you know, we want to see more women give them more time give them more opportunities you know because as a new wrestler I've been finding it hard because you're basically most promotions you're fighting for one slot on the card just two girls you know that you kind of get get involved with um and it's just I think for me as well because when I first got into wrestling I crewed quite a lot of shows Mm -hmm. and um I think people don't think about diversifying from the bottom up as well because um i saw a new promotion recently and i saw a picture of their crew kind of at the end and it was all you know white men (laughs) and i was like you know there's the kind of thinking in wrestling of like oh you know is that who's going to be kind of coming up through the ranks of shows um so i think it's just like you know it's an important conversation to always bring up is like it's too too as well like we shouldn't still have to like you know, women shouldn't have to fight for like more matches on the card. Yeah. Like speaking to Regina uh, Rosendale, she's a Finnish mm-hmm. wrestler, and she was mentioning like how it's quite it's quite frustrating for her to just not just on TV, but in shows that she's on to be the only woman on the show. Yeah, I was. Um, I did a show the other week, and I was mm-hmm. the only girl there. Me and Sky were there, so obviously Sky brings non-binary re- representation as well. Yeah, um, and it's not that like I'm intimidated by it. It's just you know, if there's little girls in the audience, or there's other women in the audience, or non-binary people in the audience, or trans people in the audience, or you know, women of color in the audience, you know, yeah. you do want to see representation. I think it's really important to have that, and I think it's just always. You know, if there are promoters <laughs> listening or anyone that's on shows listening, try and lift up the people yeah. that need your support. And that's mostly to, you know, men that can do it. Um, and I think, you know, that's why it's amazing having like everything patterned um, and Fist Club um, part of Rest of All as well. You know, because it's queer representation of people of colour, women of colour being at the forefront of shows. And I think, you know, like you said, we're in 2022. It's yeah. really important to kind of, you know, start having that conversation not even start having the conversation if you should be finishing it should be standard yeah but unfortunately it's not um and you know it still like works said, to be done 100 absolutely there's always stuff we can do you know and you know as someone is i've got um crohn's disease as well so as someone who is kind of you know chronically ill um mm-hmm. there's not representation for anyone who might be disabled you know or have mental i know mental health issues have kind of become a lot more things that we talk about but yeah. you know i just think it's thinking about the full range of diversity and yeah. kind of trying to lift up the people that can represent it and make sure Not like just A and, B and that's me as that's, well you know yeah 100 yeah, percent. that's everyone has a kind of space to a place to kind of play in it you know so let's try and work make it better make it more diverse you know because you know i think there's you know there's conversations going on about in the media at the moment you know the lord of the rings uh new show came out and people are talking about you know 
They can't be black elves in a fantasy thing. People have like... been moaning about it on Twitter, like Little Mermaid. See in the trailer, people moaning about it. I actually tweeted about that. Fuck off if you've got a problem. <laughs> okay. Stand by. Like, Little... Yeah, Little Mermaid is my favourite Disney film. I literally watched that and I cried because I was so happy. Like, yeah. just the music just, like, popped the me film straight away. It's probably going to be bad because live-action Disney films tend to be <laughs> yeah. kids. I don't care what yeah. race she is, but if yeah, you're yeah, judging the film based on what colour it is and you don't, you don't even give a shit about Disney, fuck Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's, um, you know, there are there are people out there doing good work for it and, yeah. there's always, like you say, there's always work to be done. Yeah. I just think it's an important conversation to make sure we're diversifying wrestling as much as we can wherever we hmm. can so yeah still works to be done but i think there is work that we are seeing at the moment and that includes yourself which is awesome and i think that's why i want to have you on as well i've still got to get, I basically like see your work through sky as well and then obviously invite you on and i think it's been a good chat as well it's been quite a different one yeah. Cockney, diversity uh, <laughs> i wouldn't want to do cockney rhyming well. <laughs> 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 yeah that's it maybe i think my new uh my new uh series might be cockney rhyming slang and like talking about each of them i'm definitely going to try and do a promo in it i'm going to find I, my book i think that'd be great them in. And, like, yeah. you can either do it in the hallway or a face vote and like just they Work may not understand them. it but it's just how you deliver it i think it's gonna be great even better if they don't understand it it's like yeah it's just me in it like chatting well, know, one person <laughs> that i know can actually do about that quite well because he's got he's grown up in the east ends as well and but like it just doesn't sound natural when some people do it, like Mockney, as they call it. You know, oh, the yeah. guy from the streets. I forgot his name now. Um, oh and... yeah. I the thing is, I love the streets. Oh, so like, let's let's put on our classics and have a little dance, shall we? Like amazing. Also, you can tell he's not a Cockney because we don't say dance. That's like they, he, that, he's from the Midlands. Ah, right? he's like, a fraud. He's a fraud. Burn you me. don't say dance. <laughs> you can have a dance, isn't it? Right. White Skinner. That's it. That was it. Yes. Mate, yes. Skinner, you're a fraud, mate. Like, I think you should come on the I'm show. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure he's from the Midlands. He has to be, because one of my best friends is from the Midlands, and she says dance. Dance. And I'm like, grass, having a bath. <laughs> and then when I say, like, bath, dance, and she's like, oh, you're so posh. And I'm like, no, I'm not. No, just just not, not from the Midlands. Like <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's... I, I just... I, okay, I can easily laugh. Hello there. I've got a special announcement for my next guest. Hi, I'm Sky, and I'm going to be appearing on What Do You Call It podcast. Yeah. So, it's a famous question. Everyone loves this. We're definitely not recording this after the interview. Uh, wink, wink. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it gets good feedback. The guests enjoy it. Every single answer is different. And I think you know what I'm going to ask. So, you get to pick three guests for your dream dinner party. Dead, alive fictional non-fictional might make a t-shirt of this who knows it could be your neighbor i don't know it's up to you <laughs> you are picking this you're making the food you're gonna be chilling with them who are you gonna okay. pick and why if you can give me a reason. so i'm ready for this i love this question because i saw sky answer and i was like i'm ready um so my first one is buffy the vampire slayer yes yeah, she's fictional she's a queen no, she's cool. an icon she is a hero she died and came back from heaven and still carried on and got really depressed but she still fought for everything and we've all been there, all right? So, Icon Queen, love of my life, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, first of all. One of my first questions, um, Michelle Keller, 100%. An icon, like, come on. Uh, second one, Starbuck from Battlestar Galactica. Mine are all fictional um, women that I want in my life. This one, um, so, I, I, I'm a nerd, right? I've got, like, you know, yeah. I can tell you, don't have a clue, never watched Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> so, Battlestar Galactica, I started, the first time I watched it, I watched it in an ironic, I'm a nerd way. Ended up absolutely falling in love with it. I've watched mm -hmm. it so many times now. Starbuck is um, a female character in that, and she is strong. She's cocky. She's amazing. She like is a, like the best pilot that they have. She like fights men, which is a recurring theme with with women that I love. Um, so yeah, I would have her. And then my last one is Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. Here it is um, video game character. I don't even know the video game. This is me, like. <laughs> so this is a big one for the nerds right because okay. i'm like full i've went full nerd with this um so aloy is uh, a um character where she is like uh i can't tell you anything without spoiling the game so anyway she's another Go for it. <laughs> no 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 because if someone watches it and they're halfway through and then they're like i didn't know that you're getting like you're getting like different and it's like it's not even like it's just like casual one you're in <laughs> someone's gonna be like she spoiled <laughs> i just got to it <laughs> 
So I'm not going to, but the Horizon Zero Dawn and Horizon, uh, there's a new one out, I've forgotten the name, something West. Um, but anyway, I'm playing it at the moment. Um, but she is like, I've not had such a attachment to a character since Lara Croft. And the reason I love Lara Croft so much is because she was the first female character in a game that I played and that, that yeah. was actually, you know, you played as. Um, so they're my three because we'd get really drunk and we'd like probably end up in a fight because they all fight as well. But like not in a like, I hate you way, in a right, yeah. let's see who's the strongest way. I mean, it would probably be Buffy, but but yeah. Um, but they're my like faves. I did well. have like four other people because I got carried away. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're my, my main boos. I like it. I like it. I mean, I don't actually have a clue. Last, I mean, Battlestar Galactica, I'm completely aware of it. Never watched it. I mean, I know about it because Dwight likes it from the office, but the last one, that's oh, yeah. literally, I, but I'm going to Google it. I do Google do it. things I don't really cock on or not for sure with. I'd like to Google it. And do I'll it. Like, yeah. It's such I, a good show. I bet, I bet I'll look at it and be like, oh, shit, I thought I was a nerd. Bloody hell. <laughs> I used to watch it. My brother used to watch it. You'll be like, that Bo Bells? She's a nerd. She's a real nerd. <laughs> I am. I've literally, I've referenced a fantasy show about vampires a uh, space show and yeah. uh, a futuristic mm. um, video game. So I thought maybe like, like and Transformers, Night like Wrestling and other things made me a nerd, but I think you've out nerd me. And I feel <laughs> like a right loser now. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> or I am, and I don't care. Like, I, I have to Honestly, go. like, I love being like the token nerd. Like, ugh. No, I might, nah, might lose, but no, nah, I'm not. I'm going to keep it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm still a loser. But no, nah, awesome, awesome. Hello there. I've got a special announcement for my next guest. Hi, I'm Levi Brooks, and I'll be appearing on What You Call a Podcast. I heard. All good. But no, that's that's. Thank you for coming on. Um, if the listeners want to up to date, where can they find you on social media? That is the actual message. Uh, so Twitter at underscore Bo Bells. Bo is spelled B E A U. Mm -hmm. um, Bells is B E L L E S. Um, and Instagram same at underscore Bo Bells. Follow me. Yeah. Awesome. I Do it. Post stuff about her. wrestling. After and... you have followed her, please follow me. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. YouTube yeah. channel, not YouTube channel. That might end up being a fraud. Um, subscribe <laughs> to my YouTube channel so I can continue producing awesome content on a weekly basis and have awesome guests like Bo Bows and Sky, if you remember them from the show last month. It was great. Maybe we'll get them both on together as well. Who knows? We should uh, yes! get that in the works as well. Can have a little... Oh, my God. You're going to have session. to have, like, the longest podcast ever if you get me and Sky on together. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Every 40 minutes, like, because no, it's the time of that reference. That's why you may or may not see adverts before 40 minutes in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, thank you for coming on. I hope everyone that's listened to this episode, I hope you... Have a great week. I know Monday's not going to be the most exciting day. Long live the king. Uh, it was a sad day last week. What happens, you know, if you're into the Royals, you know, so if you're lost, if you're not, don't be a dick because others are. So just, you know, look out for your friends and family at the same time. So for everyone, take care. Hello there. I've got a special announcement for my next guest. Hi, I'm Anderson North, and I will be appearing on the next What Do You Call It podcast. Yeah. <laughs>